Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Corinne's Crafts. It's lovely to have you here. I'm so glad you could join me here today. Now, this one's a little bit different. I don't normally post on a Monday, but I'm posting this on a Monday because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Monday monthly challenge. So this is where I want you, the lovely subscribers, to join in with my channel. Now, I put a picture at the beginning of this clip and you probably wondered what that was. And that was all, that was a colour palette so to speak so it had a couple of greys and a couple of pink well three greys and um two pinks in there and what i want to do is see if you can create a project using these colors so i've had a go first so i went through my pens or you could go through your pet cards you could go through your inks and i found the colors see if i can get that to click oh it's been a bit bl blurred there we go if i come like that i found the colors that i believe in my my craft stash match those and i have made a project and this is my project look at that using oh it's going a bit blurred it's trying to focus let me pull it back a bit so you can see there you go it's focusing when i bring it back look at my project just using this color palette isn't that stunning so we've got the flowers we've got the butterfly how about that? I'd love to see, I have to keep bringing it back so it stays in focus. I'd love to see what you can do. I'll tell you where we're going to um, put it all. It'll be in the video, but we're going to, if you find my um, Facebook page, you'll see a post and I want to see all your makes under there using this colorway. It'd be great for you to join in. So thank you so much for um, all your likes. Don't forget to click on any links at the description at the bottom of this video. And let's see how I made this card. As I mentioned, it th I thought it'd be really nice to have a monthly challenge running through my YouTube channel. And I thought we'd do it around colour themes. So I thought once a month I could present a colour theme. So I'm going to bring in my iPad so you can see the picture. I've already put it on the beginning of the YouTube channel. So you'll see the picture there. This is my first colour theme. So this is going to be like my the tones I thought we could have for April. And what I thought could be the challenge is to try and create a project, whatever you want it to be, just using this colour palette. So we've got some pinks going into greys. And I've got lots of different colours that I thought I'd introduce each month so that's the first one so i had a look at my pens and i found five colors that i thought matched that so i've got mg magenta three pale pink five um brown gray um six ice gray two and brown gray one and i thought that those were the right colors so i found my pens and that is the color that i'm going to work so i've also found some grey card and I've also found pink card all as you can see all in the same colour palette so that's where we're going to be working from so I thought so what can we do with this so I had a look at what we could do and the first thing I thought we could do is do some stamping this is the stamp I decided to use it's a stamps by me stamp I've got it in a packet as I said my um, um, YouTube channel is all about using the crafty products that you already have so I'm going to stamp this onto some Nina cards some stamping card and I'm going to be using an alcohol proof ink so let's stamp that out that's going to go on there let's just pin that down pick that up great thing is when you're doing something like that you don't have to worry about it being straight or anything like that and i'm going to do that so again normal way is i'm going to stamp it a few times just to make sure i've got a really good color blend but these are really really good stamps so i don't need to worry about that so I apologise now if this becomes a little bit of a longer video, but I think it's probably worth it to really get to the um, to end it. I'm, just, I'm going to do one more, one more, just to get the perfect finish. I always like to triple stamp. I you always hear me say triple stamp, my favourite. That's how I tend to do it. So I don't know whether there comes a die with this. I don't have a die with this, but I'm not going to let that defeat me. I'm going to just fussy cut around. There you go. Look at that third stamp. That was amazing, much, much better. So we're going to um, colour that in. 
And all I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of scrap card. I'm going to pop that on top. Now I'm going to bring in my little colour chart because I always find it helps me to have it in front of me. And I'm just going to colour, but I'm only going to colour with these five colours. So I'm going to start on the pink bits. Um, let's do one of the bigger flowers. And I'm just going to colour here. So this is the paler pink. So this is my PP5. So this is it. it. Oh, I think it's so useful to have that little colour swatch. That's just a scrap piece of card. It was from my previous project. I had a little bit left over. I'm only colour, I'm laying down my first colour, but I'm not going up to the top. I'm going to have a preserved highlight at the top. It's going to be smaller than that when I've finished. But for now, I'm just going to um, just put that in like that. There we go. Just put that there. Because remember, when these pens are, because these pens are opaque, every time you lay down colour, it gets a little bit darker. So I'm just, I'm almost creating an extra colour that I don't have because I'm trying to keep within that colour um, family by not going all the way to the end. So when I come to, to go over, it'll make a third colour. So then I'm going to go in with my MG3, which as you can see from my little swatch is my darkest colour. And I'm just going to come in and I'm just doing, I'm not trying to blend that in i'm just trying to do sort of flicky movements i'm still remembering where it's going to be darker so i'm going to really make sure that i put darker there because that petal is over the top but i'm just going to just flick up to there and if necessary could just do a little bit to here i can just come under there and we can just flick to there and then remembering this this one's underneath so it's going to be a lot darker there we go. Just flick that. So I want them to be sort of whispery edges. I'll come back in with my paler one and I'm going to colour down this time. I hope I'm doing it in the right place so you can see. I'm going to colour down, but I'm going to come down from the edge. I'm just leaving a bit of a preserved highlight and I'm going over that um, MG3. Yeah, that's what MG3. So it just sort of blends it in, leaving a little bit at the tip. I'm not trying, I'm not going for um, like a realistic colour blend. I'm going for sort of more of a arty look because that's the look. Because we're doing it in pinks and greys, I'm never going to get realistic. I'm just going to try and get artistic, I think. There we go. Can you see? Just like that. So we're leaving that little bit round the edge. It will all come right, I promise, when it's finished. So then let's do one of the buds. So I'm going to do the buds the same. I'm going to come from the bottom with the paler pink and I'm just going to come up like that. Again, leaving a little bit at the top. Then I'm coming in with the dark one and I'm thinking about this one. Look, that's underneath. This is underneath. So that's definitely going to be darker. This is going to be darker. And then I'm just going to do a few flicky bits up here. And then we can blend. Just a little bit of blending on there. And that's all I would do. Now, the other thing I would do is I would go maybe ice grey just in the middle, just there. Then the leaves. Now, I really enjoy doing these. So my um, brown grey six is my darkest. So I'm going to come in here. Now, you'll see I've got a mix of my pens from I've got tricolours and tri brushes. That's fine. It's the same ink. It's just different nibs. So that was my darkest, my brown grey six. Then I've got my ice grey two. Now, when you put them on, they're different colours. And you can see they're not quite the same grey. But if I take this one over that, the brown grey underneath makes that, that little bit darker. Then I can come in with my brown grey one. And then I can just drag it down off the top of there. And remember, because these are alcohol pens, all of the ink blends. I'll do that on another one. So I'm going to start with brown grey six coming out from under there because it's going to be darkest where it's coming out from under the flower then I'm going to go in with ice grey two over the top you see this is why I'm using Nina card because it allows me to blend and then my brown grey one over the top and can you see remember with um with every whenever you're doing this sort of colouring it always um dark and um, changes as it dries so you just remember that you know if you think it's looking a bit too dark or it's not quite right my top tip is always to walk away and come back after it's dried and you'll see a difference there we go so that is how I would colour 
that. Now I've rushed it out a little bit, but this is otherwise it's going to make the whole video so long. So colour the whole thing and then just, oops, fussy cut it out. So can you see? That's exactly what I've done here. Now that just took me 15 minutes or so maybe not even that 10 minutes 10 minutes because i've not gone for like a realistic blend i've gone from for an arty blend okay and the other thing i've done is i've got a butterfly stamp now the one i found and i'm sure i've got more but this one came to hand was from my academy of colors from the original academy of color so i have stamped it out and we can colour that. And again, I've just cut it by hand. And again, I'm doing exactly the same. The only thing is with this one, I'm starting with my ice grey, which is my middle colour. And I'm doing that all the way up. I'm doing that one first. Saturating the card, which is why I've got it on something else. And I'm also doing the ice grey round the outside there as well. So it's not my darkest colour. It's my middle colour. So you can come around here. Then I'll go in with my paler colour and I'll just blend those two together. And they do blend. They blend lovely because when you start to work them in. So we can come all the way around here. Don't worry, we're going over that with pink so it'll all you won't see anywhere where it over where I've overlapped. Just go in nice and quickly to show you. Can you see? And then I'll go in with my darkest colour, which was my um, brown grey six. I'm just going to take a little bit, once my card is flooded, or paper, it is card, isn't it? It's flooded with ink. It allows me to go in with that one even more. So I can then just bring that down a little bit more. You're going to say, but your butterfly's grey. Your butterfly's grey. It doesn't look right. I promise you it will when we're finished. So let's just bring that down. There you go. Can you see how that blends lovely? So I'll then just go in with pale pink six and I can just do the whole of that little like um, peacock eye. That can go just there. Just like that. Oh, sneezing. And then I'm just going to do the little eye, little bit in the darker pink. Just there. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the body. I'm just going to come in with the paler of the two pinks. Not that there's that much different, but there's enough of a contrast. I can do that. Again, this is on Nina card so that, I could, you know, your alcohol um, card, colouring card. Do that and then I can just do that. Carry on doing that until you've done him. This one's just, I've just bent it. But doesn't that look lovely? If you wanted to, you could go in with a few glossy highlights, you know, your um, little bit of glitter if you wanted. But that's not the look I'm going for in this particular one. The only thing I'm saying to you is use this tone of colours. You might not have these these ones, but find a couple of greys and a couple of pinks and just make a whole project just out of those. OK, so the next thing I want to do now, this is where it gets really exciting, is this is going to be the base. Now, I found this stencil that I've got and actually it goes that way. And I think it's supposed to be a tree. You know, it's like tree bits. That's not what I want. So I'm going to put it in the middle of this piece of card, which is five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And I've let you into a secret. It's five and three quarters so that I could get two out of one piece of card. There you go. That was the only logic. Now, the other thing I've done is I've made myself a stencil. It's just a piece of card and I've cut out a circle. And I'm just going to lay that over there. And you can see where I've been working before. And I just cut that to slightly smaller than my card, the, the base that I'm working on, just so that I could see where I was working. And then I've got myself three grey inks. I've got pumice, anthracite and misty morning. So I'm going to start... Now, this is where I did have a scrappy bit of card at the side of me so I could keep checking what I was doing. I do like to check. Now, I don't have a grey blending brush. I really need to talk to um, Joe from time to tea because I need some more um, blending brushes. OK, so I'm going to start with pumice and see where we go. I don't know if that's dark enough. Let me just put this on. I just cleaned it. We'll start with that. Right. So ah, that was what I started with. I started with... A larger blended brush. Here we go. This was a stamp by me one, gosh, from years ago. So I'm going to pick that up and I'm just going to work over that. Now I have put a little bit of repositionable adhesive 
behind my stencil but i'm going to just blend that way because i can see it just trying to lift but if i blend that way it's not going to do so what we're doing is we're stenciling through a stencil and you've seen me do this before um it's a technique I like to do. It just means I can just control which part of my stencil I want to use. I just need to darken that a little bit. If that's not coming up dark enough, what I can do, get a little bit of anthracite. There we go. Now, this is going to be in the background, which is why I need it to really pop. So if I lift this off, you can see on here, I have just stenciled a perfect circle through my stencil doesn't that look amazing it look reminds me of um japanese pitch art doesn't it where you'd have a picture of the moon so that is one stencil and using a stencil so you can make that really easily yourself and then i've made myself another stencil with circles on i'm not going to lay it down like that i'm going to use them individually now the one thing i found with when i did this before was i wasn't watching what i was doing so i'm going to go in with one color and i've got to be careful i don't come off the end so i'm just going to because now this one's a really dark one look but that, that's fine oh, wow that is dark so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to use what's left on here just like that and then Mm, let's, not, let's not go quite so dark, I think. Let's rub off some of that. Let's go a bit with the... And I've got the morning mist. That was a bit darker than I was perhaps expecting. Let's change down to something a little bit paler. On there. And I want some smaller ones. I don't want them in a line. And a couple of even smaller... Just being careful not to come off the top. I've, I made this before I realised that I need to be able to get to the top. Oh, that works. Um, I can even do a small one just there. Just using the ink on my blending brush. Liking that. So all I want to do is just do some inking. So I'm going to go with this one because I think that's my nice paler one. Which one is this? This is Pumice. So we can do this. And again, your ink will... Um, soften as it um, dries so we can do one yep and we can come I'm trying to rem remember to keep turning and using different color different sizes to now some of these will be hidden but some of these will be visible nice to come off the edge if you find it hard to come off the edge what you can do is just have this as a bigger piece of card and then um, cut it down afterwards so you can see I'm changing my grey ink. Let's come down here and do a little bit of that one. Brilliant. I think I need a little bit of the darker one. Just a tiny bit. Oh, that is dark. It's fine. Oh, yeah, look at that. Let's come up here with the darkest one. We're still staying in those greys, aren't we? Still keeping that grey um, colour. I, I just find that's all I need to do. Let's come up here with the paler grey nudge off a bit i like this one because this really reminds me if i come back to my color palette it really reminds me of sort of my brown grays so it doesn't have to follow the um the, the picture i i've put on at the beginning as long as it's sort of got similar similar similarities that's the word um you know you're, you're roughly using that color um mix so then let's just put this let's go here and then I think we can almost join up those ones there. Look at, oh, monkey fingers, be careful. Oh, now I've got to put one here now. Let's just do, let's do a bigger one because I've got monkey fingers in. There's always a way. Oops. There you go. Hidden, hidden, hidden. Let's do one there because I can see a gap. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pop that flower there. So I've actually hidden it. So I need one here, don't I? I need something just here. Let's come just there. It's always worth bringing your project back in and having a look at how it looks. We can do that. Let's put this back on again. Actually, it's not looking too bad. Oh, I think I need something just here. 
let's come in with the paler one and go over there and just down here it's knowing when to stop isn't it really is knowing when to stop okay so that i think that'll do for now i can always come back in with a few more let's just try and make sure i roughly get the lids on the right way so if that one's there that one's there okay so that's going to go like that so now now's the time to put my sentiment on so oh stamping platform back and oh, turn it around turn it around you see i often leave a piece of paper on the back there just because i like to protect it so i'm going that's going that way around I have to think of that i've sort of budged this over that way and i have found some sentiment stamps this is from box 57 i think that's saying of my uh, monthly craft boxes that i used to get um so yeah i just number them and have them out there so what we can then do is i need to just bring in my flower again that's going to go just there so because I've done that quite dark, I'm going to have to lift this one up a little bit more on my first one. I, I see. I think I can still get away with that, actually, if I do it in black. I will. I'll try it. So bring that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my, as you'll see, I always stamp in my quick dry ink. If it gets on your hands, it's a mess. But when it's on paper, it dries lovely and quick. So three stamps as per usual one two i love this stamping platform it just works isn't it every time nothing ever budges nothing ever smudges there you go that should be it that should be a strap line nothing ever budges nothing ever smudges there we go you brighten my day what a lovely sentiment what a lovely lovely sentiment to say to somebody okay so let's pop that to one side so we can now trusty little box and i'm gonna get i'm gonna get my anthracite i think and put that there a little bit of that water brush mix that up and then i'm just going to do a couple of little splats they sort of really pale off quite a lot they look like they're going to be a lot darker than they finish but that's fine we're still staying in our color palette then so this isn't watercolour card, this is just regular super smooth card, but it works. It works so well. So let's just brush that clean, just giving that a minute to, to dry. And that, and then that is my background. Isn't that gorgeous? We've made that ourselves. I'm loving, I'm loving that. Now I've got one that I've just got dry and got sorted. So I've made a card, seven by seven card. I didn't want to go too big, but I needed it to be a reasonable size. And then I have got, I showed you earlier, some pink and some grey. There's an eighth of an inch between those two. So what you'll also see when I turn this over is, I'm being careful these days, that piece came out of there then I just trimmed it down so I'm using my card wisely so I'm just going to put some glue on to there on the back and that can then go onto my car base so if you look at this we've got this color theme running through white gray pink there we go so that's my color theme, um, theme running through we've started off very clear what the color is then I'm going to put some more white on and again we're going down one eighth of an inch Ooh, yeah um let's go on that side let's go on that side so this is just um, regular white um super smooth cardigan let's just take that and again I'm not going too close to the edge because what I can do is I can get my stamping pressure tool and I can push that glue out so that's going to go there and then I can just smooth out that glue. It will move a little bit. That's not a problem. Let it grip. And smooth out that, spread that glue underneath. Smoosh it out. You see me do this with my brayer. I always used to do it on my shows with my brayer. But now I've got my stamping tool. I find that much better. So white, grey, pink, white. So we're back on to the grey. Now I know this is going to be white. And you'll see the only other thing I've done here is I've put some little... Um, like water drop pearls on um just because i could so i'm going to pop this on first i need some more all-purpose glue 
and it better get some more ordered. I have got some PVA glue, um, but I do like my all-purpose. So we're going to put this onto here, and that's going to go on there. You see, I've probably done a few more um, circles on there, but all of those are done with the stencil and stencil through a stencil through a stencil, which is a lovely technique. And then, oops pokey tool to get off the back again i've got my foam tape on here i will put links to everything and if any of you are able to click on the links that are down at the bottom in the description to this video it would be most appreciated now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to bring in my pva glue just because my collar is nearly all gone and i don't need collar for this what i'm going to do is just put a little bit of PVA, oh, this is tacky glue or PVA across each one. Now, let me make sure we've got that right there, and I'm putting that the right way. So, I've got half an inch gap between the white and the grey. I just thought it added a nice border, and again, having that PVA glue let me um, move it around okay i've got this now for once i am not going to do lots of shaping that isn't the effect i wanted but what i do need to do is i'm going to put this on and then i'm going to grab my 3d glue and i'm going to put a little bit of 3d glue on the back of these because i don't want it to grab for a minute i want it just to place and i'm going to pop that onto here I mean, that's looking beautiful. Now, I'm going back to um, one of my signature collections and I've just got some foliage. Now, I'm sure you've all got foliage. Now, I will admit, when I started this, I did it in black and it didn't work because there was no black in the project. So, a little piece of the grey that I cut off, I recut some foliage. So, it's all in the same colour, the same Pantone, and it just works. Now, you could probably get away with using a lot less than I'm doing because most of this is hidden underneath the card. Remember, we can go off the top, we can go off the sides, but we can't go off the bottom. I know I always repeat that. Um, we can pop this one under here. So these are just being glued down by the glue that's holding this down. Now this one, I'm just going to pop. And No, I'm going to pop it down here, I think. There we go, just like that. So it sort of extends that. So I've tried not to make it too symmetrical. Then I'm going to come in with my butterfly. And then am I going to put it on there? No, I'm going to put it on the side. And I'll do that with my 3D glue, just to give me a bit of dimension. And that one is really annoying. I'm going to tuck that underneath so that I can put my butterfly just there. And we can bring up his wings so you can see it is a separate piece and that let me make sure everything's stuck down is my first project doing the monthly challenge and all i've done is i've taken these colors you can see on there and they, they all the colors linked to the picture at the beginning that i put on the beginning of this video and there we go you've got those there and as i've said if you would like to have a go at this challenge what i'll do is i'll put a, a picture of the card and the color cho choices on my facebook page um i'll put it up when this launches and if you can then drop in pictures of any projects you make using this color um combination then that would be brilliant and i don't know what i can do at the end of the month i'll have to see what i can find i'm sure we can do something um and that would be absolutely brilliant and um yeah i'll see we'll pick a winner at the end of the month and then next month in may i'll try and do it on the first monday of the month i've missed it this month have i missed it this month yes because the first was the first wasn't it we don't count it because it was a bank holiday we'll get this up for the first the first monday that's not a bank holiday in april um and then we'll love to see yours so please please share your makes love to see because you don't have to use these exact colors but a couple of pinks and a couple of grays please see what you can do and i'd love to see it doesn't have to be a card it could be a scrapbook page it could be a tag it could be anything you want to do but see if you can stick to this color palette Thanks for watching. I hope you like that and uh, I'll see you very shortly.